Alan Hirsch Advisors, creating aha moments, presents Aha Business Podcasts. We provide opportunities to discover information to help you run your business and guide your decision making. The more you know, the better decisions you make. For more information, log on to alanhirschadvisors.com. I'm your host, Alan Hirsch. Hey, uh, welcome to my podcast. My guest tonight is Steve Braun, President and CEO of Search Consultants International. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Alan. It's wonderful to be with you. Well, I usually ask this question to begin all of my podcasts. What motivates you to get up in the morning and go to work? Alan, 40 years ago, I had the same, same sensation that I have today. Uh, I get paid for making people happy. It's a wonderful life. It's rewarding. It's gratifying. Uh, and that makes it easy to wake up. Well, that sounds wonderful. I mean, I have the same feeling, but I do it differently than you do. So how did you get started in recruiting? I mean, it sounds like it was 40 years ago. Correct. It's all that I've ever done. And uh, I feel so blessed about that, especially meeting with people um, unhappy with their careers, uh, trying to figure out what they want to do. I just, uh, you know, I feel so blessed that I happened to learn about this early on, uh, the long and short of it. Uh, coming out of school, met with a distant relative who was in this world and uh, sitting there talking about what I wanted to do with my life, a bell went off in their office and I asked what that was. They said that they had been working with one of their clients, which happened to be Mattel Toys. Uh, they placed a, a senior engineer with them and that bell represented that a placement was made. And I'll never forget that visceral reaction that you get paid for making people happy. Uh, and I ran home and said, this is what I want to do. And that's how I got started. So you've been doing it ever since. That's correct. So, you know, uh, who do you help? What industries? What levels of talent? How do you get your talent? How do you get your clients? Um, a lot of loaded questions. <laughs> what is unique about me, and I, I use the expression that I'm industry agnostic. Uh, and I say that because I, um, for good or for bad, I don't want to limit where I'm able to help. Uh, I have, over the years, built uh, large offices with many recruiters that are outstanding in their own right today. Uh, each one of them, we built markets that they would specialize in. So for example, finance, sports, pharmaceuticals, nonprofit, uh, and my involvement was helping them build these desks. So as a result, I just have connections just about everywhere. I can pretty confidently say that my network is as expansive as anybody in the world. And uh, so uh, if given a need for a certain kind of talent, uh, I, I always respond that I'll only accept an assignment if I know I can deliver. Um, but it also allows for me to uh, answer a lot of different challenges. So you're, you're, you're trying to help uh, all industries, anybody that you've connected with over the years? Uh, yeah, I'd say that's pretty accurate. Um, there, there are many that I do much more work in. There's more consistent need and probably because I'm involved and in their uh, networks, in their associations, things like that, um, I get more frequent calls. Um, so I, yeah, I could probably rattle off a half a dozen industries that you know, really dominate my efforts. Uh, so, um, but, but you know, outside of that is I, I share with people, I wanna know your pain. If I can deliver, I will do so. If I can't, I hopefully can point you in the right direction. So, I mean, this is uh, towards, uh, well, the COVID-19 has affected everybody. How has it affected the recruiting business? Uh, boy, uh, it's been a doozy. Uh, the, uh, having been in this world for 40 years, uh, there have been lots of doozies, 9-11, 2008, 2009, financial crisis. Uh, those are examples of times where Literally, the hiring faucets just went off, uh, uh, and people were were in trouble. Lots of them, 
Um, this one is unprecedented, and there's really specific industries that you can point to as, I don't see an answer for quite a time, hospitality, uh, retail, uh, even healthcare with uh, uh, non-elective surgeries uh, being off the table. Uh, healthcare systems are losing hundreds of millions of dollars a month. Well, Hopkins so, says they're going to be losing $450 million or something like that this year. Correct. Yeah, and I know that to be true. My wife is a uh, uh, the chief financial, I'm sorry, the chief experience officer out at UCLA, their system, and as healthy as one in normal times as there can be, um, just just a, a, a just staggering of, of dollars that they are losing for uh, inability to do non-elective surgeries. Yeah. So, uh, how how has COVID nineteen affected you? Affected recruiting? Uh, has it closed the door to it, or uh, are you still finding uh, uh, recruitment positions to to uh, fill for? companies so, so there's there's two answers to that one is uh, initially i would say probably 50 percent of the searches that i were work that i was working on were just put on hold uh they remain on hold to this day um and so uh you know you 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 have to figure out how do i get through that time as many people do um fortunately i had mentioned to you earlier that i am uh, you know, involved in a lot of different arenas. So I'm able to shift and move. Uh, so, you know, I can identify where industries are still healthy and continue to help on those fronts. IT, IT services, um, even nonprofits for the most part. I've got a lot of work searches that I'm continuing to work on in those fronts. Um, the others, um, I am trying, I do try to find answers, you know, so we met, talked about retail, hospitality, I, I don't see any near answer for, for some awesome people. So uh, part of a good chunk of my day every day are meeting with exceptional A players in industries where um, they're, they're, they're turned upside down. So working with them to find answers, maybe introducing them to organizations within industries that know me, trust me, like me, and, and uh, I can deliver for them what I call best business athletes um, who don't come from their arena at all. They just, they will acclimate because they're outstanding. So that, that's kind of been my reaction to all of this. Uh, what industries have been mostly negatively impacted uh, through the COVID-19? I would say uh, you know, pretty obvious uh, uh, hospitality, think about hotels, restaurants, you know, and, and all that's connected to them. It, it's staggering. Uh, and, and I get to feel that from, from groves of super qualified talent people that come to me because there's no answers. Um, Retail is another, you know, obviously we're not going out, we're not going to shops. And even when we do, uh, as it starts to open up, it, it's at 25%. Uh, and then uh, healthcare, you know, is another. Um, elective surgeries are only just starting and the cause and effect of that has been healthcare systems laying off so many people because elective surgeries are literally millions and millions of dollars of their revenue all um, shut off for, for a good deal of time. What are you doing? Uh, you know, what are, the, what are the good industries? Are, are some of the industries still looking to grow and add personnel that you can help them with? Well, I don't want to call it fun, but I call it a interesting challenge that uh, I myself am really exploring where are there opportunities, especially for people that come from industries that show no, no light at the end of the tunnel yet. Uh, and uh, so there are entrepreneurial kind of opportunities that I'm able to open them to. But the exercise I give to talent is to really look within themselves and find any and every clue uh, Taking out, you know, all the, only the work that they've done and what's logical on that path. So 
earlier hobbies in their life, current hobbies, uh, friends that are in roles that, you know, they've always admired. Uh, these are the exercises that I'm giving people to, the expression I use is, help me help you. That I can make the connection to things as long as they make sense. So, you know, what nuggets can you offer to candidates, companies, organ you know, this is a, a, a terrible time for, uh, I mean, your, your practice has actually probably changed. You used to get out, meet with people, uh, and how are you conducting your business so that you are still supporting and helping the industries? Uh, lots of answers to that. First of all, network, network. Uh, uh, Alan, I see you all the time on, yes, I know. <laughs> on, on networking events, which are, which are great, good for you and, and good for me, if I can say. Um, you need to be visible. So, uh, you, you know, you find Zoom uh, events that take place where it's populated by a lot of people. You make introductions. Um, just... Uh, uh, or at minimum, take from that anything that is remotely interested, hook up with people like me that can make the connection for you uh, as long as you're giving us a good story to tell about you know, why this connection is happening. So certainly lots of things that people can do uh, and uh, uh, you know, the rest, you know, it, it goes along with I always coach people on how to best Facilitate or take uh, facilitate an interview. Uh, questions to ask. Be prepared. Do your homework. Uh, another common expression I use: wherever you are, be there. Be mm -hmm. interested. Well, uh, why don't we take a break here for a couple of uh, commercials, and uh, we'll come back and we're going to talk about what you advise uh, some of the uh, clients and and talent to uh, interview questions. That would be great. So when we come back, uh, I'll be continuing the conversation with Steve Braun, President and CEO of Search Consultants International. I'm Alan Hirsch of Alan Hirsch Advisors, and this is AHA Business Podcast. Hi, Rick Dempsey here. As a former Oriole and Series MVP, I know a lot about winning and championship teams. Today, I'm happy to tell you about my award-winning web design and internet marketing team. Adventure Web Interactive. For over two decades, many of Maryland's most successful firms have chosen Adventure Web as their strategic partner for web design and online marketing. I can tell you from using them personally, their search engine optimization and social media programs have saved their clients tens of thousands over the traditional pay-per-click digital agency. Visit AdventureWebInteractive.com and listen to what clients such as Hercules Fence, TriStar Electric, ABC Rental, Rhine Landscaping, Markdown's Office Furniture, and many more highly successful firms have to say. And don't forget to tell them Rick Dempsey sent you. Strengthen, protect, and preserve your retirement nest egg. Scott Garceau here for the Stephen J. Sless Group, Baltimore's reverse mortgage specialist. Reverse mortgages have evolved to become a viable retirement tool. Enjoy retirement without monthly mortgage payments, improve cash flow, pay off debt, and stretch retirement savings. Stephen and his team can offer strategies to make housing wealth work for you. If you're 62 or older, learn if a reverse mortgage could help. Visit ReverseBaltimore.com. An equal housing opportunity lender. This is not a commitment to last. Stephen J. Sless, NMLS 2985-81, BRMI, NMLS 3094. Uh, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, my guest is Steve uh, Braun, President and CEO of Search Consultants International. Uh, welcome back, Steve. Uh, Thank you. What, what kinds of advice do you give the talent uh, for interviews? What do, what do you advise them to present to recruiters and or HR departments in the major companies? Um, so, under normal times, which I, I wouldn't deviate from, uh, I always share with people, be prepared for whatever you're diving into. If you're meeting with a company, you want to take advantage of uh, what the internet has to offer, research. You can find out everything about the person, the persons that you're speaking to, uh, the company, its mission, 
uh, and, and of course, why you feel you'd be a good fit. Uh, it is critically important. Uh, I, I'm always amazed that people are asked the question about what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. Strengths are relatively easy because we're all comfortable with things that we're good at. Weaknesses, I've literally had people say, I hate when they ask that question because I never know what to say. My response is you should only have been in that position once. <laughs> and then when that occurred, you walk out and say, I don't want to ever be put in that position again. Let me get some good responses for that. So maybe uh, a couple nuggets that your audience can take here. Uh, I think, first of all, um, a, a weakness is really a company asking, why shouldn't we hire you? And so you're handing the guillotine right over to them if you're offering these reasons. Uh, instead, um, you, uh, I think, and I've asked employers, what do they look for in that? And, and without a doubt, the most common response is, I don't care what their weakness is, I want to see that they did something about that. So my first nugget, let's take an example. Um, I hate public speaking. You know, I hate when I'm put in that position. However, knowing that, I signed up for a Dale Carnegie program to get myself confident with that so yes. I'm much more able. So they're taking steps to better themselves from that weakness. So that would be an example. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because that's one of the questions that I advise my clients to uh, ask. Uh, when they're doing an interview, uh, you know, what are the three greatest strengths that you have and the three weaknesses you have? And absolutely. And the weak, if they don't answer the weaknesses correctly uh, in a way that how they improve themselves, they are sometimes negatively impacting how they interview. Absolutely. Another example, Alan, of uh, kind of taking a different approach. That one was we're confessing a weakness, but I, I dealt with it and uh, it's now behind me and I'm happy to say that. Uh, so, so learn behavior. Uh, but another approach would be actually making a weakness a strength. So for example, if I were sitting in front of an employer that wanted confident, strong people, um, maybe my response is I'm a bad loser. I hate to lose. Uh, and so while you're kind of confessing something, you might then want to say, I've, how I've overcome that is that I, as, as much as I hate it, I recognize you have to move forward. So I've just coached myself to move on. But that might be received that, wow, competitive, strong, aggressive. I like, you know, those types of people. Right, right. So your weakness is actually perceived as a strength. Right. So... Who do you usually represent? Do you usually represent uh, the employer or the employee uh, in your uh, practice? So 100% I am hired and paid by companies. So I'm looking on their behalf for great talent. Uh, you know, that, that's where my revenue comes from and that's where my obligation comes from. Uh, what uh, I'm perfectly happy to do and I share this with any client company that if I find great people and they ask of me what can I do to prepare I'm going to tell them because don't you want somebody who is wanting to put their best foot forward uh, and they're asking the questions this is not secret information that uh, needs to be you know like automatic so to that I'm very much there for people to, you know, I will tell you anything you need to know, you need then to do the homework and prepare. Um, my one last comment always to employers is, my work with you has to end as follows. Three months from now, you need to call me and tell me, Steve, you hit it out of the park. They are awesome. But likewise, I need to call the person and they share with me, Steve, I can't tell you how happy I am. I've made 5,000 personal placements, actually more. That was at middle of last year, I hit that 5,000 mark. Not a, my company is exponentially larger, but my, I myself, 5,000 placements. That's my greatest gratification. 
that you get that call. And that's what I'm driven to every day. It sounds like you've done an amazing job over the last 40 years. If I, my math's correct, that's uh, 1,200 placements a year. No, it's 120 um, placements a year. Right. I, had, I had the decimal <laughs> points wrong. Uh, that's still a lot. That's uh, one every three days. Um, wow. Okay. <laughs> Uh, um, or is it 12? Anyway, the decimal point somewhere in there. Whatever the math is, the, I, I'm, you can see my passion. Uh, it, it's incredibly gratifying to get those calls on both sides. And uh, it enables for me that great people know great people, companies go. So it just, you know, uh, life is good. It's expanded, but uh, I'd like to say, I don't want to be braggadocious, but I've earned that respect because I will never sacrifice anything other than great people for great places. So again, what, what do some interviewers do wrong in interviews that uh, hurt their chances? And how do you coach them to be proactive in their interviewing with the, with the, uh, the professional recruiters, the HR departments uh, that you're working with? Well, Alan, as I'm sure you know, you can't, you can't w walk in and say and do for people. They need to do it for themselves. So um, common things that I, I stress are uh, that they don't prepare. They wing it. They're, they're very apparently self-confident that I'm great. I can dance to anything. That, that just doesn't that, fly. That it doesn't um, fly. You're absolutely right. So, so somebody needs to take the, the time to prepare. It's very evident when they do. Another key mistake are talkers uh, that uh, I cringe when I hear a company, Steve, you know, that person just rambled. Um, you know, I just, uh, you know, let them talk. And, and my mind was already made up because I know that my clients would be totally dulled. So uh, the, the simple thing is be a great listener. Go in. Grace, gracious, thankful, strong initial presence. I'm excited to be here and learn. Uh, that's a statement that should be said where um, people go off the rails are, they end up doing, you, you look, look at the math of it. If you find that you're doing more than 50% of the talking, you're in trouble. Well, I, I'm a believer for salespeople, they should do 70 to 80% listening, which is the same thing that you're talking about. You listen, Absolutely. you ask the questions, and at the end, then you present what yours you see as solutions to their problems. Absolutely, no, that's a hundred percent correct. Other things, um, people sometimes I find become defensive. You know, so if a weakness is is probed or asked instead of um, welcoming that, I appreciate that concern. Um, it becomes defensive, and the second you become defensive, you're toast. Yeah. Uh, one last question. Uh, you've been doing this for 40 years. What's a piece of advice you would give to an entrepreneur or someone that wants to go into the search in the search business? What is a piece of advice you would give to them? Um, that's a great question. Uh, so now we're talking on the other side with companies and I find that um, on their end, we're all human beings. So they're certainly not purpose, uh, um, perfect. And I would encourage the employer side to be a little bit creative. You know, that the expression I use on that side of the fence is, I provide for you best business athletes. Uh, so, you know, if you only look from a certain skill set, a certain background, you know, at, at some point, you're going to be very boring. So uh, just, uh, I try to urge and I, I so much appreciate the companies that are willing to take a look. There will always be rationale for who I recommend, uh, that there is interest and reason for them consider. Never said, I, mean, I can't in any way power them to hire people. I can only get them to see that that best business athlete might come from surprising places. Well, I wanna thank you for this interview. Uh, how can, uh, listeners reach you for some of your expertise. Always welcome hearing from anybody, uh, you know, on any of these subjects. So 
Uh, Alan, I can be reached. My direct line is 410-332-9949. My email is sbraun at searchconsultants, all one word, plural, dot org. Well, thank you very much again for uh, being with joining me for this podcast. Uh, I'm Alan Hirsch of Alan Hirsch Advisors, your host. Uh, please join us next week. Uh, when Gary Sanchez, president of the Y Institute. Uh, and uh, if you want to follow me or give me a call, reach me at 443-977-4500 or reach me, visit my website at alanhirschadvisors.com. This has been AHA Business Podcast. I'm Alan Hirsch and this is uh, uh, AHA Business Podcast. <laughs>